So, ladies and gentlemen, with the completion of Section A and B, real quickly, once again, Section A, Section B, of Step 10, uh, we're going to go ahead and proceed with Section C. Now, Section C, I pretty much built out already, um, kind of trying to get an idea where things went, what things were articulated, where things need to be glued, what things need to be uh, um, mass so in a sense i've already pretty much completed section c uh we've seen yeah, for a second we've seen these areas right here the ones that pop off quite often uh right over here those guys have been done and those were part of section c and those were done because as i was priming it and kind of removing trees and whatnot. Uh, these guys, all the parts around here, there's like about three parts, uh, were pretty much just stayed together on the, on the spruce tree with uh, just two um, attachment points on the tree. So eventually they came off. And so I said, you know what, might as well build them out and, and attach them. So I attached, I built these two guys, and then even uh, that other section on section A, K16 and 17, which is already glued down. Okay, that's glued onto that that C clamp looking thing over here. Um, again, same thing, just held on by two attachment points on the sprue tree. That broke off as well, so I said, you know what, screw it, might as well just uh, paint the whole thing, prime the whole thing separately. So you've probably seen this attached floating around on the workbench. But these guys are done. This was supposed to be C1 and C2 on my instruction sheets. The only thing I have not done is attaching this little, no, that's done too. Those are the hinges there. So yeah, this thing's, this thing's finished. Uh, F24 over here has already been attached. And I'm gonna show you that one because looking at section B, how is J7, J6 attached onto that fixed arm? And it was very perplexing. At first, I was thinking that that thing was attached onto this plate, but there's no attachment point. Uh, thinking it was like kind of like, like this. I was going, God, that's going to be very weird for me to glue that thing on. And, um, I was looking at it, and then I was looking at section C. And on section C, uh, it's kind of hard to see where this part, J7, J6 attachment, those two pieces glued together, where that sits. At, well, here's the plate. Here's that U28 plate right here. So, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. So I looked at it again, and lo and behold, uh, there are some small little tabs, little cutouts, that I did not mask. And I actually had to uh, get my hobby knife and scratch those out, uh, eventually gouge them. This right here was just an attachment point on the sprue. So I couldn't do anything about that one. But, These four little attachments here, right over here, here, and the other two on the other side. That is where this guy attaches onto the C-clamp. Now, I'll try to show it to you in pictures. Uh, the way I have my camera set up, it, I can manipulate the photo to make it a little bit clearer, make the darker parts a little bit brighter so you can see it. But it actually attaches right bloody here. And those four 
what looked like loose teeth on that C clamp, that's where this bloody thing gets attached. Now, I'm kind of forcing that in there. Uh, I'll probably have to scrape off some of the paint on those sequins, but it's right there. And it's a nice fit. And these two braces, these two pillars, basically, are going to be matched up with these other pillars right here. And so now you have these guys giving this thing a lot more structural rigidity. Uh, on the model, on the real thing, whatever. Okay, So you have these four braces here. Okay, you have these two braces here and these two internal ones that were part of the C-clamp where that F-17 debacle was giving us so many problems. But that's it. That was it. I was going, well, damn. Okay, so that's done. And that's going to be uh, the end of Section B. So I just need to clean that up, remove the paint from here from inside the clamp a little bit, give it a little bit, be able to slide it in a little bit easier so I won't have to force it like you just saw me do. So I won't have to force like you saw me do. I'll just clean up these two areas here and inside that C clamp to allow, I'm seriously thinking about crazy gluing this thing down because this thing, I don't want this thing to break off. This thing should not be coming off. And I think even on the real structure, I don't think it, it, it even comes off either. And then getting back to this, to that rear piston, I'm now thinking now of actually cutting little notches, drilling all the way through, just cutting all the way through, and actually sliding that thing in and gluing that down. Because I don't think that thing does move. Maybe it does on the real McCoy. Maybe they detach these guys uh, for whatever reason, maintenance to lower the thing. I don't know. But you know what? I think I mentioned on the most recent video that we had those three holes on that bracket, this guy right here. I probably would put that thing on the very end. Put that uh, mounted on the very and glue it. Glue it down. Get in such position where you have it. Uh, attach it to that pin that's underneath this uh, covering plate and be done with it. So that thing does not move. It actually stays in place. The only thing that does move is going to be this guy. I mean, it looks cool. The silver part came out really nice. I still think. I, I, that looks so freaking tits. It looks so cool. But we're going to go ahead and finish up on the rest of these brackets now. So we're going to go ahead and continue that right now. Okay, so I came by and I attached this using my crazy glue toothpick. And I welded it on those four teeth. Those four teeth right there. You could probably see the shininess of the crazy glue attachment. And underneath as well, it's kind of hidden. Uh, you won't be able to see it because that rear screen, that rear screen will be like right up against there. So you probably won't be able to see that once I attach that back plate where the air filters are. Uh, and then a little bit on the sides, so that way the crazy glue would just seep down the side. And it seems to work pretty well. Still got my swivel arm up here. Uh, still got that lower piston working still. So everything's good. No worries. Now, setting that aside, next thing we'll do, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the K uh, 
tree, the K tree. And uh, for this one, it's a multitude of different parts. You have U44, U2, not the band, just the piece. K32, K34, and, and that's this guy. And as you can see, it's already built out. I already put it together, primed it, painted it, whatnot. If anything, I'll probably need to scrape off where that glue is going to be set. Because there, I did mask those four teeth placements, those four roots that are on here. Okay, so those guys are all set. It's just I didn't know to do those. I, I, you know, didn't know. Those of you who are doing this, now you know. Okay, you know more than I do. Okay, so this section is already done as well. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out uh, the K34 part. That's this guy right here. This K34. I'm going to go ahead and remove that and attach it. And this K34 part, as you can see on my instructions, and, and again, I labeled these. I put on all these letters here, uh, section A, B, so on and so forth. I didn't write them, section A, B, C, D, but I did write these. Those are just my notes and arrows, what goes next, what things I glued down, okay? Uh, that's what the GD stands for, glue down. So those are my notes. And if you do this, um, you know, you want to do the same thing. You want to come by and look at this thing thoroughly. I, there, are, I don't know how many days I looked at just this page just to get an idea where things go. So K34, U2, that was A1, B1, and that looks like it's going to be on the left, excuse me, the right-hand side. Uh, the vehicle so looking at the instructions looking at the way this thing is placed this guy goes right bloody here okay that's where it's gonna go just want to make sure should go somewhere like that okay just have to clean out the the paint the prime and paint on that L brackets these four teeth that are here so I can mount them to the roots right here so that's where that goes now once this is done once this heck arm is done and we're still down to section G section D and we're still down to section D what next how is this thing mounted uh, that was also perplexing I, I, I had God, where's the, how am I gonna mount this thing because on the whole of the tank, and I'll bring it up real quick because I had it with me because I was curious. There are two placements, two holes where the heck arm, that big giant scorpion tail, <laughs> that's what I like calling it at the beginning, looked like a big old freaking scorpion, and it's attached here, wherever my red tweezers are, and over here. And that's it. Just those two attachments is holding up that entire bloody bridge on this model. So talk about structural rigidity. My God, I'm hoping whatever's anchoring this scorpion tail, I just hope it doesn't break off or snap off or gets crushed by the weight of all that plastic, that plastic bridge. I should weigh it. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see how big that thing is and how much weight it's going to be pressed down on this. So maybe etching those brackets here, the ones that are loose, the ones we had a dilemma on, uh, and snapping it together, uh, I meant, you know, that, that might be a good idea for me to do. But like I said, there are two other holes. There is one over here that I didn't glue down. I just placed it there. And there's another one that's over here within this part. Remember that? There were two holes that were there. So my suggestion is, if you're building this, 
if you're building this Hobby Boss kit, attach it to the rear hole, that last hole. Don't attach it in the middle, attach it in the middle. Because I think when I was bringing it down, when I was attaching it, it was like, uh, it wasn't going all the way down. And even if I maneuvered this thing, uh, it, it still wasn't snapping into position. It might have. Uh, you know, I, I just wasn't too sure how all this equipment was being mounted. But there you go. That's my two cents for the legume. So let's go ahead and attach that. Whoops, where is it? Just had, let's go ahead and attach that, and I'll be right back. All right, so we have already placed on there uh, one of those braces. We're going to go ahead and attach the other one. I already sanded and removed the paint from that part, from that L brackets, those teeth that are there. And I do want to point out, you can barely see it, uh, one of the teeth on the surface there, on the flat surface, is smaller than the other one. This is smaller, this one's longer. And if you look at that J17, J16 specifically, you'll notice the same thing. One is shorter and one is, has a longer root. Okay, so that, that gives you an idea where the placement is going to be when you attach this thing on there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and super glue that down as well. the other one so it's looking more like a real piece of equipment it's pretty impressive i have to admit hobby boss you, you did an excellent job at engineering this thing instructions uh, we could have done better i know you can uh, separating this out into two pages would have been really beneficial telling us where to glue and where not to glue also even though you mentioned it once uh, it, that, that one option in F17 was just really throwing me off. And to be honest with you, I, I think those metal pins actually gives it a little bit more structural rigidity on that part. So there you go. Those guys are down. So I was curious what that one hole over here is. But we'll get to that next. But that's it. That's pretty much it. That is your section C of the rear support arm, that scorpion tail. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and continue with section D, the last part. And even that's almost finished. So uh, the only thing I'm not gonna do just yet uh, is the smoke grenades. I could do those. I'm gonna hold off on that just for the time being. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead to Section D. Section D is going to be the back end of that scorpion tail, this part right here, and the actual smoke grenades. I think they come out this way. Come out that way. I think they come out that way. Um, everything's been glued down. Uh, I gave it some time for it to uh, cure. And we're going to go ahead and get started. So, real quickly, as I was getting ready to prep... The next section, which is going to be on that J section here, uh, most of the parts have already been attached and painted, primed and painted. But, but unfortunately, uh, you know, it happens a lot to modelers. They get excited about coming to the end of a project, uh, especially this one. I've been working on for the past several days now. And I forgot one thing. One of them was, what is that hole? That hole right there, that rectangular hole. Where is that one? Well, I found out that it's that corner piece. This guy. I masked everything over except for this one. I covered that one up as well, uh, as you can see with the paint. And that part actually goes right over there. Uh, it was at the very end on the last corner of the instruction sheet. Part E. Um, I got everything else, and then I realized, wait a minute, 
Where is that one? So there's a little handle that goes on there. I already crazy glued that one on there. I'm going to just snip it off with the nail clippers. And then, obviously, the, the smoke grenades. So, as I mentioned to you, I'm going to paint those later. I'm not going to paint them right away. Uh, but I did add the liquid mass, the blue part that you can see. And then I also realized, wait a minute. What else am I missing? And there are these brackets, these braces, this guy right here, F-14, of all things, my favorite plane, uh, two of those on those F-trees, those that dual tree. So they've been liquid mass. So I'm going to have to spray paint those and attach those uh, another time. But we're going to go ahead and finish off at least the major portions on this one. So let me go and get started on that back plate. And that one is just a layer. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It was layer upon layer upon layer of these plastic plates. I mean, it looks kind of cool, I guess. Uh, in reality, you're probably going to just make a big giant mess. I mean, it, it, I think I'd leave it. Personally, I think I would leave it with that stratification. Those layers, like a cake. It kind of looks cool that way. Uh, even though I just removed the little sprue spur same thing over here not a spruce spur boom oh, be careful almost broke off the piece i should have sanded it anyways so there you go so that guy and it's marked in such a way that there are bigger and smaller areas so it goes right inside that hole right there which Kind of covers up, well, it doesn't cover it up too much. It just protects that uh, cylinder from extraneous shots um, from enemy, enemy tanks. Okay, so that's that's settled. Okay. Um, the smoke detector, the smoke detector, the smoke uh, grenade launchers. Okay, let's go ahead and cut that out. And again, same thing. There were sub-assemblies, sub-sub-assemblies that I've already cut out, placed, and then primed together. So a majority of these are going to be um, F-29s onto F-35. That's at last in with this big square box, U-77, J-16, J-17 at the back, um, all set, ready to go. Uh, the holes that are here, obviously, for the smoke grenade launchers. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. I'll be right back. All right, so as we're nearing completion, uh, that back plate is secured. I was getting ready to attach... I want to put my hand in crazy glue. Uh, attach that smoke grenade launchers, and you have that arch. Okay, okay, no worries. And I was thinking it's going to just like, wait, oh, there's a notch right there, just right there. But no, 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 no. That's not correct. This actually goes this way. Problem. Another dilemma. Okay, here we go. This actually goes on here. But I can't fit it on there. It's supposed to, it looks like if you put it in, it's supposed to go like right there. And it'll fit right on top of that, on top of that back plate. But guess what? That scorpion tail is being impeded because I have my pins that are obstructing on both sides. And it's supposed to go right in there. Ugh, another defeat. Now, small dilemma. Just need to file those down a little bit or remove it and make it smaller. So we're going to stop right now at this point. But I do want to show you how this thing is all attached. Now this part right here, I was gluing it down, wasn't too sure uh, where it's supposed to be located. So I didn't actually attach it to that uh, horizontal beam. That, that beam with all those uh, roots on the teeth. But here's the thing. 
how is this thing mounted on the real tank? That was the interesting thing. And I was very curious up to this point. Remember I told you about those two holes, right? Those two holes on either side of the fan, filters, the, P, the PE die attached. Well, guess what? This guy attaches right on there and there. Well, this one's painted, so this one's a little tough for me to push down in without getting my big giant cabeza in the way. But it's supposed to go there. And these, these big giant brackets, they're just in the freaking way. I would think that they would be like mounted onto the hole itself, but no, 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 no. Which brings up the point now, um, those hinges that I had over here, well, I think they just attached themselves right there. There are some other small winglets that come out, and I think they just wrap around the bottom of that hole. It's very interesting that it's just attached, on the model that is, on there. Now, even crazier, on the real tank, it's 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 snapped together on with four bolts. Four bolts is all it has to attach it to. So uh, it's either the the bridge is in such a way that it doesn't put too much weight on that rear support arm, that scorpion tail that looks like a scorpion tail now. Uh, or it's just, a, this obeys the laws of physics. Anyways, so that's where we are. Step 10 is 97% finished. 97 because I still need to do some touch-up paint, some major paints on the braces, this guy right here. Um, <clears throat> and then try to file down, <laughs> try to file down those two pins on either end right here, right where my tweezers are, the red tweezers. Just file it down so that way this thing can actually slip inside there. Um, so interesting. And um, you know, just for shits and giggles, this thing comes down like it showed in those pictures. Um, it shows it very well in those pictures that this thing is actually maintained in this fashion. Not hanging, but you get the idea. Okay. Uh, so the the German soldiers are here to uh, put in new smoke grenades. And then it's just raised right back up. What that other piston does down here, down at the bottom, I have no idea still. Uh, maybe that's a shock absorber. Maybe that's what that is. Or maybe, like I said, it's just used to uh, maneuver the bridge, uh, snap it into place. But then why have it... Uh, attached onto there. So it, it's very bewildering. Uh, I'm going to still look up YouTube videos, but that's pretty much it for step 10. All right, so you rascals. So we're going to go ahead and finish up on step 10 of the AVLB section D. Okay, we're going to go ahead and install the last of the smoke grenade launchers. So really quickly, just to show you, I've already added the smoke detector, excuse me, I keep saying smoke detector, the smoke grenade launchers. But if you take a look closely, I also added a bit of the photo edge on there as well. And again, that came from the Edwards photo edge set. I'll try to mention it to you in the description, the last of the description. The last thing I want to point out, uh, well, second to the last, uh, I was looking at my photos of the actual AVLB and I noticed that the piston was not just quite there yet. Um, this thing is almost perpendicular to each other, okay? The, the base and smoke grenade launchers are parallel with this fixed frame being uh, perpendicular, 90 degree angle almost. So I had to drill in just a little bit more 
of that cylinder. And to be honest with you, I figured out what size drill bit I actually needed. Yes, I did need to get a drill bit this time. So this guy here is a 5 64th inch drill bit. And I just to test it out, number one, just imagining different drill bits. I installed it in there, uh, the shank portion of the drill bit, and it fit in there quite well. Not too much play, but it does go in there pretty nicely. So once I was able to get that size drill bit, then I installed it onto my file. Just put it in there. And very carefully, grasping nearby the end of the cylinder, installing the drill bit, and actually drilling out a bit of the plastic, removing it, wiping it down, drilling it again, removing it, wiping it down. And once I was done with that, then I came by with my file and inserted it in there to even everything out. And that seemed to actually do the trick right now. So installing this guy back in, installing the piston back in, I was able to reinsert that piston pretty firmly to a little bit more than a 90 degree angle. And I think that's gonna be appropriate for what we need to do with that bridge when we lay that thing down. So I'm satisfied with that for the time being. I'm not gonna glue it down until I actually measured out that bridge to see how much I need to tweak uh, the heck arm. But let's get back to that smoke grenade launchers here. So I've already done one side. Uh, as you could probably see, hopefully, the chains of the photo etch of the lids that I have up here came out quite nicely, I think. I painted it, the tips, the covers, with uh, Vallejo Dark Sea Gray uh, 71.053. Uh, this is the Vallejo Air that I use. And uh, that seemed to do you know, pretty good. It's a good color. It doesn't have to be black. It looks pretty good. Uh, it gives it that rubber rise, rubberized uh, indentation on there for these little bumpers that we have. Also attached the rest of the stuff that was on there, like this little um, I don't know, hydraulic box, electrical box. I'm not too sure what that is, but there is a handle. There's a handle right up there. I'm going to go ahead and paint these cylinders that are inside here uh, a steel or a silver color. Uh, these look like these are pins that actually come out to secure that bridge once it's overlaid uh, to make sure that that bridge doesn't slip off, fall off, whatever the case may be. I still have not done that last piston down there. Uh, in the sense of those braces, they're still not glued down. Okay, but like I said, we're 99% finished. So let's go ahead with that smoke grenades. So the thing is about the smoke grenades, they are quite small. I already removed the, the mask on there. And I heard from another uh, model maker, uh, Vinny is his name. Uh, there's a long uh, channel address that he uses. But he told me that white glue can probably use be used as a liquid mask, which to be honest with you, that liquid mask seems to have that same uh, texture, uh, viscosity uh, to it. Although it's not colored and it will turn out clear, uh, it will come by and prevent the uh, paint from getting on areas where you don't want paint. So anyways, so I already talked to him about that. Now, when you're getting this photo etch, I want to point out, first of all, number one, that you might want to remove, scrape off some of that material that's on there. It seems to have like a bit of a chrome finish on there. So I sanded it down very lightly, fine grit, and it gave me this brass color, which is, you know, what photo is just made of. But instead of just gluing it straight on there, I actually form fitted it first. So I'm going to go ahead and grab it 
right there at the cover. And using a pair of tweezers, kind of like tweak the chain around. Hopefully you're able to see that. And I actually get it right up to where I want to connect it. Now you might have to twist that pin a little bit. Okay. And try to make it such so that it falls with gravity a bit. So I'm going to just bend it just a bit more. And that looks good right there. So all I need to do then is remove that cover, that photo edge cover. Add a little bit of your crazy glue. Just swipe it right on there. You don't have to put too much. With your fine tweezers, install that lid on there first. Okay, I'm going to adjust it by hand. And there you go. So now you have that. Oops, I almost grabbed that wrong end. So now you have that cover on there. All you need to do is just attach a bit of the glue right there on that holder. And you're set. Now, I did come by and change them up a little bit. Some I have them coming out to the left side. Others I had come out over to the right side, as you can see on this one here. The chain comes around to the right. I don't think I'll paint the chain. It looks cool the way it is right there. But that's how I do it. On a very completed now build of the heck arm, uh, I really don't need to show you how that guy works. You've seen that thing play around. But it came out very nice. Uh, the photo edge, as I mentioned to you, that I'll, I'll show to you in stills, also came out well. Everything's coming along very nicely. Tank's taking a bit of time, um, as to be expected, I guess. Let me zoom out a little bit more. And uh, But she's looking good. She's coming around um, with that last major piece. The next part, though, is going to be that laying arm. I think it's called the vigil arm. Vigil arm. I'll have to look it up. Anyways, I do want to say it in German because it is a German Leopard 2 AVLB. So this now concludes part 6B, section D of step 10. Whew, that's a lot uh, of this Hobby Boss model kit. Uh, I hope you're enjoying this build, this video, as much as I'm enjoying building it. Uh, it is, whoops, sorry, stands in the way. It is quite a bit of work that needs to be done for this kit. But like I said, everything's coming around very nicely. Um, and that's going to be the next part is building out that section right there. The bridge probably be done, hopefully during Christmas. And uh, so that way I could show you what this beast will actually look like. So this is M Modest once again. Thank you for watching my video assembly of this uh, great model by Hobby Boss. Very well engineered, uh, very well put together. Instructions uh, to be noted, especially on that heck arm right there, that guy right there. But everything else seems to be coming around pretty well. Anyways, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. This is Modest. Thank you very much. Enjoy your Christmas.